Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video on how you bind both Access and Tandem receivers to your Ethos radio. Now, Access has been around for quite a while. It kind of replaced the older AWCST system that this radio still supports, uh, but only version two, sadly. But the Access system has a number of advantages over other systems. Access receivers like this R8 Pro that we're going to bind in a minute, talk 2.4 gigahertz, provide the telemetry back, all the usual stuff. However, we'll also bind in this video this tandem receiver, this TDR10, 10 channel receiver, but has lots of antennas. And that's because it's talking to the radio over both 2.4 and crucially 900 megahertz. That's gonna be 868 or 915, depending on where you are in the world. So it actually gives the receiver two bites of the cherry to make sure that it has a strong connection to the radio. Now, if you're coming from Spectrum or one of those other systems to Ethos, the binding process can be a little bit weird because it's a two-step process. The first is you register the receiver to the radio, and the second one is that you bind. So if you're coming for Spectrum, where you're used to using a bind button or even a bind plug, that seems like a slightly redundant step, but there are some advantages. But let me go and show you the basics of how you bind your new receiver to your new radio and get it ready to work. So the first receiver we'll try is this one here. This is an R8 Pro. This is an access receiver and it supports over the air updates. We have all of the outputs here with S bus in and S bus outs as well. Now, what we need to do here is with the radio on, we need to go into the model settings and we need to go into the RF system. Select internal module. We don't have an external module on here. We don't have any of the additional antennas externally. And we need to select access off the protocols that are available. There's access, AWCST D16, that's for version two receivers. And then we also have the TD mode that we'll do shortly with this receiver over here. But for now, we'll just select access. We can see that we want to use the internal antennas. That's really important and we are going to turn it on. At the top, you'll notice now there is an extra little icon appeared and it says 2.4G and currently it shows there's no bars activated. Now, if we scroll down, you'll first the first thing we need to do is, to, is to register the receiver. So what we're gonna do is with the radio in that situation, I'm going to use uh, this little thing here. This is um, a five volt battery illuminated circuit just plugged into a Wi-Fi smoke stopper and that allows me to turn it on and off. So we're just going to plug it in. We're going to observe polarity. It's on the edge of the receiver. Hopefully you can see that. Register. So the radio is letting me know it's, reg it's ready to register. Now, as we power it, I'm going to hold down the bind button and I'm going to power it and register. turn it on. And now on the radio, you can see that it says the receiver name is R8. We can change that to be whatever you want. So if Register. this was going to be in a model, I potentially maybe call it that model's name so you know which is which, but we're just gonna click on register. It says registration okay, and we're good. Now we can go down to bind. Let's power off the receiver so that it's completely ready. We're gonna hit bind. bind and then we're gonna power the receiver again. And it comes up and says select device. So you can see the receiver, we're gonna do it. It says bind okay, and it's that easy. We can bind other receivers and now by RX1, hopefully the camera's picking it up, it now says R8. So again, it can be handy if you're gonna bind multiple receivers, maybe you've got them doing specific things in a model. Now, just to prove this is all working, what we're gonna do Go back out of RS system. If we go into the outputs and see where the throttle channel is, channel three is the throttle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug a little servo into channel three, and this will just prove that it's all working. And now as I move the throttle, we can see that moving as well. So that's how you bind up an access receiver. If we actually look at this receiver here, you'll notice that there is the regular 
antennas and an additional T antenna. And that's because this receiver is actually talking both 900 megahertz, 868 or 915, depending on where you are in the world. And also it's talking 2.4 gigahertz as well. Whereas this one is only talking 2.4. This is doing both. And this is a great idea if you are worried about flying in an area where there may be a little bit of interference because it has two options to try and retrieve everything. So the process is pretty much the same. So what we're going to go is go into RF system again. Let's turn it off first of all. We're going to select TD mode. Now TD mode is tandem mode. And then we're going to make sure that the antennas are internal. 900M antennas are internal. You can also set the power here as well. We'll leave it at 25 milliwatts. And we're going to turn everything on. This time at the top, we have two icons that have appeared. One says 2.4. The other one says 900M. Now, guess what? We're going to do exactly the same thing. So job one is we're going to select register. And we're going to power it again. Make sure that you're observing the polarity. We have the signal pin at the top and the others at the bottom. So I'm just going to plug that in any old Register. one here. We're going to hold down the button as we power it on. And there it is. It's appeared on the radio. So we're going to click register, click OK. We're going to turn off the receiver so it's unpowered. Go down to bind, hit enter. Bind. And we're going to power it up. It immediately sees it. We select the device, say bind OK. And there it is, we're bound. So now if I turn that off and turn Telemetry it back on. Lost. Telemetry recovered. There we go. And now we can go in and we can press set. We can do things like go into the options, decide how the outputs um, are all selected, whether telemetry is all working. So that's how easy it is. It isn't complicated compared to how I found things like access and stuff in the very early days of the technology. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. The trick with this is that you do have to register it first. You don't have to do that with all the technology. As I said, the introduction like Spectrum and things like the AWCST technology, but with access and the tandem system, you register it first, then you bind and you're good to go. So there you have it. It is particularly difficult. My experience is personally, when I first started playing with access radios, the early ones and the early access receivers were a lot less easy than that. But it seems to be a very well developed system now that just seems to work pretty flawlessly. I do love the idea of the tandem receivers that have the benefits of the long range systems, but also the benefits of the 2.4 gigahertz as well, all in one little receiver. It's a really cute idea. Don't forget to do things like set fail safes. I might do a video on all the fail safe options. The fail safe options on this radio are very similar to lots of other modern radios with hold, custom, no pulses and other settings. I'll put a link down below to a video that explains those different options. But hopefully if you are coming into this or you are interested in the steps, you now know what to do. It's pretty straightforward. You register, you bind, and then ideally I'd say set your fail safe and you're good to go. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.